Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Kingsway Podcast. Um, before we get going, I just want you to know it's weird that we're putting out a Christmas podcast this late. Um, and to be honest, we recorded it before Christmas. Uh, and I was going to edit it and release it then. Um, that just didn't happen. But we thought it would still be a good idea to release this podcast um, for you guys after the fact. Because Christmas comes with so much nostalgia. And so the fact that we're a couple weeks out from that honestly makes us a little more uh, balanced, a little more well-reasoned to understand that Die Hard's a Christmas movie um, and to talk about Christmas movies in general. Um, and so we're still going to release it, still enjoy, and now after you've watched your Christmas movies for the season, um, you get to reflect back on them and, and see what you liked, what you didn't, and uh, hear our thoughts on it. So here we go with the episode. Welcome back Welcome to the King's Way Podcast. Podcast. So glad you're here. <laughs> Ryan, you just, you can't help. Yourself. I can't help it. You can't help yourself. Well, uh, it's about that time of year again where the Christmas music is actually something I want to hear. Yeah. Where decorations make sense. Mm-hmm. And where winter is fully showing up. And winter is kind of fun. It is kind of fun. Uh, in for like two days. Two weeks. It'll be like, <laughs> but right now it's kind of great. When we're filming this, we are staring down the face of a uh, very bad winter storm that is mm -hmm. potentially coming. Um, so that might <laughs> tell you when this video, this video is made. But yeah, um, I read last night, wind gusts up to 40 miles an hour and minus 30 degrees below zero is possible. Wind chill or like... The temperature. Wind chill. Whew. Minus 30. Yeah. The actual temperature is like between like minus 5 and minus 10. That's still, I feel like we haven't had minus anything in We had that long polar time. V vortex thing. That was the weekend I showed up yep. to town. Yep. That was, that's like two years ago. <laughs> and that, that is the only time yeah. that I was like, wait, is this like a day after tomorrow? Like the eye yeah. of the storm that just freezes everything yeah. that it goes over? Potentially. Evidently, this is just normal weather for canada but not for us this is yeah. very different for us yeah i was listening to another podcast and somebody was trying they were at zoom interviewing somebody from like chicago or more up north uh -huh. and they're trying to describe missouri winters and they were like we don't honestly get good snows almost ever we just get ice and we get ice forever <laughs> always ice never anything else and he's like, oh, that's rough. Dude, it is. Well, and the, the worst part, the worst part for our stuff is like, we'll have like, like it was last week, like 40s and 50s. Yeah. Super and then nice. In like two days, it's like minus 10. And yeah. you're like, I'm sorry. Like, I can't imagine ever being like, if, if you didn't have a weather app, you didn't have the internet, you, you were like living in like a cabin and you had to like yeah. try to winter here. I feel like you would just, constantly be like you couldn't make plans no like or like yeah. um, you'd have to like trust the lady that has like the broken knee that's like my knee is aching the storms are coming like yeah. that that type of like grandpa's grandpa's shoulders hurt therefore it's gonna rain in yeah. two days the state <laughs> of missouri is hiring those people right now <laughs> <laughs> that's newscast i feel like the older i people. get the more my my bones are trying to do that <laughs> yeah <laughs> help me <laughs> but uh, you know, weather weather permitting, we got some fun stuff planned. Excited for our Christmas Eve Eve service. You've been working really hard on the setup for that here at yeah. Kingsway, and then obviously we're gonna do a small Christmas service as well, which I'm I'm stoked that we're getting together to that too. So, um, yeah, I uh, I I think we want to do a fun one. Are we okay with that? This I is a fun. So. One. It's a fun one. I I think this is a fun. One. I think for for my own heart, my own sake, I think it's it's just fun sometimes to. To just have a little uh, joy, have a little yeah. peace, have a little hope for uh, some things that are just light and fun. Uh, so here's the debate. You ready? Mm -hmm. Everybody has that one Christmas movie yes. that they're like, this has to be watched before it's officially Christmas. Yeah. And maybe maybe here's a, maybe it's not necessarily a movie. Some of you, it, it might be like a cartoon or a song or a song. Yeah. Or, or a tradition, you know, like this is what you're going to do. And, and Katrina had some separate ones than I did. My wife had some separate ones than I did growing up. And she definitely 
didn't have the movie that I have as yeah. like the center of my tradition, which I don't even know how it became because it's like one of those that I felt like you either you either love this the one that I have or yeah. you're like you're either unaware of it or you're like eh, take it or leave it like yeah like legitimately. Um, so I'm not I'm not expecting you to even agree. I'm not expecting. I most probably of this won't. Out there. But well, you're, you're rather <laughs> disagreeable if I if I may say so myself. Yeah. When it comes to these debates, but that's that's what the people want. So you give them <laughs> what they want. Um, and I also know we need to have a very uh uh deliberate and distinct conversation about a different movie that yes. you and I have been talking about off camera. So I'm excited for that as well. So as you're watching this, I want you to start to think about that one movie that you think we should say that yeah. hopefully one of us. Yeah, we probably won't say, but maybe we'll, we might say. maybe we'll, we'll, we'll do some honorable mentions. We'll talk through some stuff. Yeah. But you know, you got a few days and uh, you got a few, um, few chances to maybe uh, catch up if you've missed, or maybe you're going to watch one of these movies because that's something you just forgot about. So um, yeah. drum roll, uh, Ryan, what's your, what's your favorite Christmas movie that you have to see every year? I'm not going to say the one that I really think because yep. we're saving that for later. But my favorite classic Christmas movie yep. is It's a Wonderful Life. Yep. I knew it. It's you want the moon? <laughs> I'll get it for you. I'll throw a rat It just a rat. feels like To Kill a Mockingbird, but seasonal. Yep. Oh, no, I mean, it's got some of the best... And if you if you haven't seen it, I mean, it's black and white. It's an older film. I mean, yeah. it's not it's not something that... Honestly, I I wonder if the next generation will even pick it up as a movie. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I hope they will. I think it's worthy of it. Um, yeah. If you are a Wonderful Life uh, fan, put that in the comments. Hit the like. Maybe subscribe. Leave us a good review just for that. Yeah. Because that's a great movie. I it's can't argue with it. There's nothing I can argue about that. I can't. It's First of all, it's rock solid. And it's been around for a long time. And people have loved it for a long time. Um, secondly. It's very quotable. Very quotable. You probably are quoting it. You don't even realize it. Like, every time a bell rings, an angel gets its wings. Yeah. Like, that's, it's a wonderful life. I, I feel all those ways about it, but the way I know that it's a classic is how many other episodes of TV shows and stuff like that have tried to have an It's a Wonderful Life episode and tried to just copy and paste the story yep. with their characters and spoof it and whatever. Yep. It's like Groundhog Day. Honestly, a f an okay movie. Yeah. But it's a classic because of how much other people have picked it up and tried to do that thing in movies and television or whatever. And it's it's almost a concept at this point, more than it is its own movie. Well, yeah, because there's a very, very popular, very similar spinoff movie with Nicolas Cage called The Family Man. Have yeah. you ever seen The Family Man? Never. Okay, so it's very similar where, like, he's given the opportunity forcefully yeah. to kind of see what his life would have been like if he'd have chosen to go towards this girl that he liked and make a family rather than become yeah. this shrewd businessman that's like yeah. in charge. And so the whole movie is just him getting to go back and see that kind of. Yeah. And it's dude, it's so good. And it, I watched that one because it's a, it's a more modern version. The black and white throws me off a little bit. I yeah. have to, I have to admit it's, it's hard for if me to watch. If it wasn't winter, if there was a lot more gray and all the shots, yeah. then I, I feel that. Yeah. But it's so classic for me that I can't get away from it. I know you're not alone in that. I know that yeah. people are listening or watching and they're, they're doing the same thing. Uh, mine is also a very classic. Yeah. Um, no drum roll needed. It, it's very simple. I think I've even mentioned it on here several times in different yeah. episodes, but it is a white Christmas. Um, the longest. And literally one of my kids went, this is really boring. Like we were watching <laughs> it. Like, no, it's not. Honestly, that this may be blasphemous, but that was me the first time I saw The Godfather. Yeah. It was like two and a half hours in. I was like, are we still going? Has anything happened? <laughs> <laughs> so they killed a horse. Um, no, I, yeah. I, I, I think there's like several reasons that I really liked it. Um, I was really into musicals for uh, a large portion of my life. I, yeah. I was homeschooled and the library had a lot of musicals. And so I grew up watching like... I mean, every classic musical you can think of that came to, you know, it's like Newsies was one of my yeah. favorite movies for a long time. But, you know, watched all the versions. The Christian Bale one. Yeah, the yeah. Christian Bale one. And I don't know. There's there's so, there's so many cool little moments. I feel like it's funny. I feel like it's classic has been Crosby's. I mean, it's just 
it's just got all yeah. these like really cool moments and songs and the dancing and and then on top of that the story is just really well done they have this yeah cool full circle thing from world war ii and i don't i can talk about it for a while i think my favorite reason for liking it is just that it's literally been something that i think i've seen every christmas of my life and so yeah it like we we put it on the other night we didn't finish it but we watched the first half and it was awesome it's almost like yeah. it needs an intermission if i'm being real but it was very very good <laughs> now there's not even getting the movie we yeah keep, we go- keep dancing we're around dancing it. around it but we'll get to not it. even getting to that uh a personal christmas tradition in sharon and i's young family i say that we don't have any kids it's just <laughs> us and our dog uh-huh. uh we have every year what what makes it feel like it's Christmas or it's not Christmas is watching all of the Harry Potter movies yeah, yeah. because every Harry Potter movie, uh, first of all, the series is great. We've beat it to death at this point, yep. but the series is so great. And every Harry Potter movie is a whole school year, except for the last one. The book was a whole school year, but mm-hmm. the they split it into two movies, whatever. Uh, but every every one of them is a whole school year, and you have a strong, Christmassy kind of feel in the center. Yep. There's something like winter happens and it has its own music and its own stories. And usually there's a Christmas storyline, whatever. It's not, they're not Christmas movies. Christmas isn't a vital part of the movie's plot in any way. But it's about, but, but it always has it. Yep. And it always feels right to watch that at that time. And this also comes from <coughs> the kind of, I had seen the first three movies. Mm -hmm. uh growing up but just like wasn't that interested in them for some reason Mm -hmm. um and just never heard and grown i get it yes well no that's exactly what happened is that i got married to sharon i was 21 it was december of 2016 we got married december 9th and then honeymoon and then we're waiting for christmas and uh new year's and all that so we had quit our jobs and we were getting new jobs in uh january and so the standard man thing happened where we're just kind of cleaning the house and she was like, Hey, can we, uh, can I put on a movie just to like put on in the background? I was like, yeah, whatever. She's like, I'm going to put on Harry Potter. And I was like, Oh, gross. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then maybe four minutes into the movie, I'm leaning on the door frame, just mouth open, drooling, watching it. And for the next three days, this is our first year being married, yep. first month being married in December. And uh, I watched all eight in three days and was just blown away. I was like, this is it. So this it is- really has like a nostalgic yeah. connection to you. That, That's amazing. It's it, December is when I first watched I it. I and don't then- want to destroy Harry <laughs> Potter for you, but I have learned some things this week that have uh, messed with me. Made it better or worse? I, I don't know. Like I kind of <laughs> I I have to take it. So... I Sorry it. that this is turning into Harry Potter. So I had but, to, uh, but I want to say these because it's really funny. But the, the guy was like, so why is Jesus in the Harry Potter? He's just doing magic where he's not supposed to and tricking the muggles into loving him. He's like, water to wine. Look, they're like, we did that in third grade. <laughs> <laughs> More bread? Yeah, all, everybody in the kitchen can do that. Like, <laughs> like, like it's just, so the whole idea of celebrating Christmas in inside that world. He's yeah. Like, he's just a normal guy. <laughs> To them. Yeah. And I was like, no! But I also love the thought because it's just like, yeah, the, the spirituality that's in it, of course, connects to the Christian story. And it's not yeah. just about that. No, but it made me laugh. Yeah. And then the other one was if Fred and George had the map, they would have been seeing Peter Pettigrew sleeping with Ron for two years yeah. before that movie ever came out. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's true. <laughs> like, <I'm> like, <laughs> Like, they would have noticed him anyway. So yeah. those are huge. But I agree with you. Every time I watch a Harry Potter movie, which I was watching last night, they feel Christmassy. Yeah. Like, there is a part, and I think it's their release dates. <laughs> I think it's the, there's winter in almost every single one of them. And I think if you want to compare it to Jesus, yeah, you can have the weird comparison of of mm-hmm. everybody has a hold on the supernatural, not just Jesus, whatever. Yeah. But the thing that gets me in the first movie, comparing it to Jesus and Christmas, yeah, is how... Harry shows up into um, into a world that has been waiting for him. Yep. And he's like, but I'm just a boy. And they're like, like no. I, I spent the last 11 years with terrible parents, but, but parental figures being a normal person. 
And it all that whole conversation, that whole thought process makes me wonder, like, when did Jesus know he was Jesus? Did he know the whole time? Was he one year old, couldn't speak yet, but was like, I'm the son of God. <laughs> like, <laughs> or, or did it dawn on him at like some certain age? Or I have did no, his mom I don't know. tell him? Like, did his know. mom? Like, I'm just imagining like <laughs> Mary's holding him and then he's like, does this like very subtle wink. Because <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you want to say like, like he's omniscient while a baby or he knows he's God while a baby, then like, why is he not just like, I'm hungry mother while he's like six, <laughs> six months, months old. Yep. Yeah. So it, the Harry, first Harry Potter movie, every time that somebody's like, it's Harry Potter. And he's like, I'm just whatever. I'm just a boy. It, it makes me think of Jesus showing up to earth and being like, mm-hmm. I'm just a boy. Yep. What do you want from me? Like, anyway. and then by the end, of course, he's the victor. So let's get to our debate because I do okay. like this. And honorable mentions from me, uh, if you're looking for something fun to try new, Claus is the best thing on Netflix. Klaus. Klaus. K-L-A-U-S. Yes. Such a good movie. Animated. Really fun. Also one that I absolutely love that's a little bit of a guilty pleasure is The Holiday um, uh, with Jude Law and Cameron Diaz. I've recently seen that and it was fun. Yeah. It's a, it's just a, it's like a classic that Katrina and I really enjoyed and laughed at. And Jack yeah. Black is just sister. Yeah. So That's him in every movie, yep. though. <laughs> it is. School it of is. Rock yeah. and Tenacious D in the Pick yeah. of Destiny, whatever. Well, and then Jumanji and I mean, yeah. all of them, they're, they're great. Uh, but no, it, the, it's really fun. Um, I'm also a uh, Home Alone fan. So like Home oh, Alone Home has kind of like taken yeah. over our house. So like to be fair, I like Home Alone way more then whatever the other Christmas movie is with the kid with the BB gun, you'll shoot your eye. Oh, the kid. Christmas story. I like Home Alone way better I mean, yeah. than a Christmas story. I don't know if that's just me like not getting it. My dad laughs harder at Christmas story than anything else because I think it <laughs> so reflected his childhood yeah. and like everything about it. And I'm like, I don't connect with it as yeah. much. The only thing I would say is one of my best friends in high school name was Ralphie. And so we just, we just yeah. were like, you know, she, I mean, he was so sick of that yeah. movie by the time that. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I missed being a part of the generation that enjoyed that movie. Yeah. But I feel like everybody can enjoy Home Alone. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, the, the next gen, t- Jason Cooper just laugh. I mean, yeah. I've not seen Jace laugh out loud as hard as when those two guys are just getting the <laughs> junk beat out of him by this kid. Yeah. You know, a paint can hits him in the face and he's yeah. on the floor laughing. So. But that's just a certain brand of like late nineties, early two thousands movie hundred percent, where, uh, violence happens in cartoon ways to people mm-hmm. and it's funny. But if, if like, I don't know, Michael Bay made yeah. Home Alone, <laughs> yep. it'd be like paint can goes straight through, through his skull, yeah, yeah. Blah, blood gore, whatever. <laughs> and you'd be like, oh, it's terrifying. Why is this, this house kid's on fire? This kid's a psychopath. <laughs> From a yeah. paint can. <laughs> yeah. They, they just got lucky with that genre that, like, it's palatable oh, and it's funny. To- it's totally funny. And yeah. there's there's a new movie coming out that's uh, it's called Violent Night. And it's... Yes, it's with the Santa David Harbour. Yes. <laughs> I almost saw that, but... I looked at the reviews and it was like, I have a hard time. We're kind of straying away from Christmas movies a little bit. But I have a a hard time with movies that want to take like, like actual real seeming human violence and make it a joke. I agree. So uh, Logan, the the Wolverine movie, isn't exactly that way. It isn't trying to make it a joke, but it's just flooded with weird violence and like, not just like I shot a guy, but like, like like very specific, gory, kind of weird, whatever. Uh, the Suicide Squad, the James mm. Gunn one. Yeah. The ones before were like serious and gritty and whatever. And that one was like, we're going to try to make the punchline of jokes people's like gruesome, gory death. Yeah. And uh, so I, I had a hard time with that. Like Man, I, can that do, makes sense. I can do Saving Private Ryan because it seems like there's a struggle between good and evil and people are valiantly putting their lives on the line to whatever that's way different than like this guy had the like goriest shot in the face, face blown completely off thing. And it was the punchline of a joke. Yeah. Like I, I have a hard time with that. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think I can't watch violent night. Yeah. Because it just made me laugh when I read the title and I was like, and I I read the synopsis and I was like, like, uh, 
And I, I want to watch. I don't it, enjoy but... movies like that as much either. I'm I'm much more <laughs> of a storyteller. I, I don't like boring movies. Like that's. I like adventure movies. Mm-hmm. Those I like, are like my favorite. Sahara is like one of my favorites, and it's like the <laughs> most random yeah, B film on the planet. Um, yeah. So let's get to our debate because I think if people are still listening um, and are curious, we are going yeah. to have an age old debate that has rivaled probably almost any other debate on a Christmas movie. We may have had this debate before in a podcast about a year ago, but new evidence, new evidence has come has to light. Emerged. So we're talking about. Die Hard. The greatest Christmas movie of all time. It's a classic. It's a classic in the same way that It's a Wonderful Life is, where people want to take that movie as a trope in other movies and TV shows. It is a classic. I will give you that. I think it occurs at Christmas time, but it is not a Christmas movie. Disagree. (laughs) I think Harry Potter is not a Christmas movie, any of them. No. Because it takes place... Part of it at Christmas, mm. Chris, and and like the wintry December snowfall yep. Christmassy thing, is a big part of a portion of it, but the story is not dependent on Christmas, and so I think it's hard to say that any of the Harry Potters are Christmas. And I movies. understand that you're going to say that it's a it's Christmas movie because she's traveling at Christmas time, and that that she wouldn't be traveling if it wasn't. The Christmas movie time. could not have happened if it wasn't Christmas. <laughs> I just go down the ride and I say Christmas is not a central theme, nor does it affect any other part other than just setting up the timeline <laughs> for things to happen. I understand. I would say Christmas is a central plot point. Uh-huh. It is a central color theme that most of the movie has a lot of red and white and green in places where it doesn't need to be. Yep. And I would say, and also like Santa hats and whatever, because a Christmas party is happening. Yep. It's it's not only, it doesn't happen on Christmas, but it happens with Christmas in like in like the windshield. You're Wasn't like it like Christmas, Christmas Eve? Christmas. Isn't it Christ- Something like that Cause, or close. Because he says Merry Christmas to her at the very end, right? Yeah. Like, doesn't he like say like Merry Christmas, babe? And Something like, like that. Yeah. And so I... I know there's like parts of it. What really sparked this debate again, if I'm being honest, yeah. was an article that came uh, across my social <laughs> media that says uh, director of Die Hard settles debate. Uh, and I was like, what? You know how the algorithm popped yeah. up because we talked about yeah. this off camera. So I click on it and he says, surely enough, the screen, the screenwriter and and the director both said Die Hard was never intended to be a Christmas movie but it has become a cult classic for Christmas lovers. Yes. And I was like, so people that love Christmas, they watch it because it has all that spattering of stuff in it yeah. to play to the yeah. Christmas people that like Christmas. He's like, that's why we did all the lights. That's why we did the yeah. colors. That's why we did all that stuff because they wanted people to enjoy the film. Yeah. And so it, it in in some ways this debate is going to rage on forever because they're like you you unintentionally made it so Christmassy that the debate rages on. Yes. Because in my mind I'm like that sets the record straight. It was not intended to be a Christmas movie, but he never fully says. But I don't believe it is. And yeah. so that is, and, and I, I think like, you that did nothing. <laughs> I have two points about that. One, he didn't say it's not a Christmas movie. No. He said it, we didn't intend for it to be a Christmas movie. Mm-hmm. But I'm assuming that the director and the screenwriter or whatever mm-hmm. are both people who grew up in the US, grew up celebrating Christmas. Oh yeah. They threw subconsciously their own appreciation for Christmas in there so hard that even if they didn't intentionally mean to make it a Christmas movie, they did. Oh, yeah. Well, and you can tell, I mean, when you watch the film, I, I haven't watched <laughs> Die Hard um, maybe in a couple, well, it's probably been a year, maybe two. I always watch when they like come, they come across yeah. like my whatever. I'm like, oh, yeah, sure. I'll put that on in the background. Yeah. And, and then I end up watching both of them because I'm like, I got to watch the second yeah. one because the second one's pretty good, too. <laughs> I do think the first one's better, but that's, you know. The second thing about it. Yeah. I had this in my mind. And then as soon as I said the second thing, I can't remember what I was going to mm-hmm. say. Yep. Uh, Subconsciously put all that stuff in. I agree with you. I also think... Oh, the second thing Mm -hmm. is that I don't always agree with the people who made or are in charge of the thing. Mm -hmm. Here's one good example. Uh, The people who made Uno recently came out Mm -hmm. and said that you cannot stack draw twos. 
that if you get a draw two, you can't play another one. You have to take the two, and then you can play another draw two for somebody else. Mm. We all know in our hearts that that's wrong. That's wrong. But the official authority said, oh, that's the way you're supposed to play it. And uh, But I think that Uno's become a classic to an extent where they can't change the direction of the game because it's already ingrained in our hearts and minds. Mm. And I believe the same thing about Die Hard, that saying we never intended it for it to be this, even though what I'm about to say is agreeing with the second half of the statement, saying we never intended for it to be this yeah. is a little late. It's already become a Christmas movie because of its reception. So Quentin Tarantino has a very similar way of approaching <coughs> movies. He actually yeah. loves to give just enough information to where the watcher gets to write the rest of the narrative. Yeah. So uh, the movie with Brad Pitt, um, uh, Inglorious. Yep. Um, Inglorious Bastards. I'm going to say it online. There it is. Boop. Uh, boop. Um, he uh, he has this massive scar across his face Yeah. that they constantly mention and reference. And so he was interviewed, and he's like, why don't you ever say, like, what happened? And he's like, well, what do you think happened? And he's like, no, I want to know. No, 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 no. What do you think happened? And so the, yeah. the guy that he was interviewing – he asked him, you know, and the guy had an answer. He's like, that. he's like, that's cool. That's a good option. And he's like, you're not going to tell me. He's like, I don't know. I was expecting yeah. everyone to watch it to come up with their own scenario yeah. for what happened. And he's like, I love to do that. And I, I feel like do that. as much as he built that in and knows that about movies and wanted to make that real, people do that with movies, whether the director leaves room for that or not. Yeah. And I would say that because of its reception, because Christmas is a central plot point and a central visual mm-hmm. theme, a recurring theme. You see where I'm going. You see yeah. where I'm going with this. Cause that that it's a goes, Christmas movie. it goes both ways. That's what yeah. I was going to say. It goes yeah. both ways. Cause in my mind, I'm like, yeah, you might watch this and it may attach to you in a yeah. very holiday way. But for me, I have never had that attachment been made. It's always yeah. been like a side character. And that's, I think, like, that's something you can go to a doctor about and see what they can, <laughs> what they can help you with. They have a pill that'll help I, uh, the surgery. <laughs> I guess my heart needs to grow two <laughs> sizes or something. Yeah. <laughs> that's the other thing. Yeah. having I feel like a lot of people don't want it to be a Christmas movie because it has strong antagonists. Yeah. But if you think that, then you have to think that The Grinch is not a Christmas movie. Mm -hmm. It is a movie centered where the protagonist is the antagonist. Yep. I heard something about The Grinch the other day that threw me off. So The Grinch goes up for on the hill, all right, and he lives there for like however long and never goes down to the city, never goes back. And he's living off of the trash that the city, because that's why he lived up on the mountain, because all their trash comes up there. So the question that the that this little Instagram reel said was like, well, where did Max come from? He's a trash dog. He's a trash dog. He's most of the trash that he's living off of are the Christmas gifts that they throw away two weeks or three weeks later. Yeah. So he would technically be the puppy that some kid down in Whoville didn't want anymore and put in the trash. That's <laughs> likely. But in my Tarantino way, uh-huh. <laughs> it's also possible that he could have run off mm-hmm. and been living off the trash. Yep. And yep. and the Grinch found him yep. living off the trash while he was also living so off the trash. So that's how he made his friend. I just found could it funny. Be. I was like, well, that's uh, debatable, but also ah! very sad. <laughs> yes. So, <laughs> well, I appreciate you guys listening. I'm very curious in the comments what your standout movie is and whether or not uh, Die Hard is a Christmas movie. I need, I need to know. If you think it is, welcome to the club. <laughs> We have your robe and your badge waiting in my office at the church. If you think that it's not, comment why in the comments or email us at ryan at kingswaymo.com and uh, I will destroy you. I will end you. You brave, brave soul. With die hard please facts. come to my rescue. I just need you guys to know that I have, Sharon's given me two or three good die hard Christmas things. Uh-huh. <laughs> One's an ornament. Um, there's a scene in the movie where he's crawling through the air vents. Yep. And she gave me an ornament that is literally a little wooden box that's gray with the picture of him crawling <laughs> through the... It's right there. I love it. The other thing is she gave me a diehard Christmas children's book. It's a little bloody, 
<laughs> but but it reads it's the size of a, of a children's book and it reads just like a children's book and it's the movie. <laughs> oh my gosh well no wonder this is so close and near dear to your heart that yeah, makes more more is. sense she well, understands me uh thanks so much for uh, tuning in and guys i i hope that you have an amazing christmas with your families yeah. and that you get to experience some of the joy and peace and and hope and love that only comes from christ i hope that you really remember that yeah as much as you can be distracted by material things or opportunities or or even experiences, I hope that you choose to ground your hope and your peace and your and your love in what the Christmas is all about. Yeah, and that's Harry Potter. No, I'm just kidding. That in is. Jesus. So I uh, <laughs> I really I really am thankful for all of those that tune in, that lo- that watch, that listen, the feedback that we've gotten, and we're excited for another year of. Uh, growth and new experiences yeah. and new conversations and uh, possibly new people even on the podcast as well. So as always, leave a review, uh, click the subscribe button, share if you can, and uh, have a great and glorious day in the Lord. Bye, Mom. yippee Kaye, podcast listener. Woohoo!